let's admit it, we all have a tendency to lie about how we are truly feeling. It just makes life easier. When someone asks you about how you are doing, rare is the person who is honest and says, I'm terrible. The increases in my homeowner's insurance are just crushing my budget. I feel like I'm failing in my work and in my ministry. My kids, I think they stopped listening to me somewhere between two or three years ago. I don't know what happened. I have this nagging headache. There's, there's this pain in my joints. When people ask how we're doing, we don't want to dump on them. It feels rude at times. At other times, it can make us look foolish. So it's easier to just say, I'm fine, I'm good, but you know, isn't the rain miserable? We can be honest about the weather, but rarely are we honest about ourselves, with others, God, and even ourselves. We walk around wearing on a plastered smile, we make sure our posture's really good, we keep our car washed so that we look like we're strong and we have it all together. But on the inside, we're dying. And I want to know, is there a cure for that struggle? Is there hope for those who feel crushed on the inside, but they can't find help and grace from others because they're afraid it'll ruin their appearances? At times, the people who are clinging to the false appearances with the strongest grasp end up being those who are in church. And the reason that happens is that we think, well, I'm saved. I'm in Christ. I've been filled by his spirit. I have a great church family. I read my Bible and I pray. So shouldn't I have everything all together? And what would people think if they knew I didn't? Would they think I'm a fraud? That I'm not even a Christian? Would my fruit reveal the rottenness of my heart? And so we cling to these masks that we wear over our faces until it feels like they're permanently fixed to our faces. And is there help for those who struggle to take off the mask? Well, John Lynch, Bruce McNichol, and Bill Thrall are here to offer you a cure to help you take off the mask, the burden. And their book is aptly named The Cure. I found this book to be engaging, to be excellent throughout the vast majority of it. And let me tell you just a little bit about, oh, about what I enjoyed about The Cure. Welcome to Rev Reads. If you want to discover more books that will help you to walk in the grace and freedom of Jesus Christ, please subscribe to the channel in order to stay up to date with the most current book reviews. Like and share this video with others to help them know about True Face Ministries and their book, The Cure. And I also want to say a big thank you to the Buy Me A Coffee members whose support allows me to cover the costs of keeping up with Rev Reads in order to produce new book reviews. And I would love for you to consider, if you're not a member, to support the channel for as little as $3 a month online. The Cure reads like Pilgrim's Progress, except in this journey there are only two stops in the Pilgrim's life that is covered. The main character, who is never named because you should view yourself as the main character, is given two options in which to walk the Christian life. He can take the path of pleasing God or the path of trusting God. He takes what sounds like the better path, the holier path, of pleasing God, and it carries him to the room of good intentions. Now, everything in the room of good intentions is clean and beautiful, and yet somehow unsettled. Unsettled first because everyone in the room is wearing a mask. They're all wearing wonderful, smiling masks. You discover everyone in the room is doing good. They're all involved in Bible study. They all have things in the Christian life that they're devoted to. Everyone has everything together. But you start to feel as if there's pain behind the masks of those in the room. They all have a fixation on trying to keep their lives clean, keep the sins out. Everyone is living with a mentality that if they do more good things and less wrong things, that will bring them to holiness, and then God will be pleased with them. 
but you begin to crack under the pressure of the room of good intentions. And it leads you back to the beginning of the journey, where you once again have two options. Do you trust God or do you please God? And since pleasing God didn't work out so well, you take the path of trusting God. And this time, choosing the path to trust God takes you to the room of grace. And the cure is really about what you will discover in the room of grace. And here's the thing about the cure. The cure is a real cure. It's not a three-step or a five-step plan. It's not a magic pill. It's not paying $50 forward to find out that tomorrow you'll wake up and all your dreams will be fulfilled. This is about living real life, but living real life in the room of grace. And that isn't always easy. Because to live in the room of grace first means you need to admit something very difficult. And that is, you can't solve your own sin problems. It also means you need to walk in the reality that your sin will never separate you from God if you're in Jesus Christ. That there isn't this mound of sin that's standing between you and God and God's peering over the sin and saying, if you just clean all this stuff up, then I can come and live with you. No, in the room of grace, Jesus clears out the sin debt and comes to you. But I think a problem that we all struggle with is that at times, even though Jesus has cleared away the sin, we still hold our arms out and we say, Jesus, you can't. Jesus, you can't love me and come to me because I haven't done enough. I haven't learned enough. I haven't improved enough. But grace calls us to see what Jesus has done to clean away our sins and turn us from sinners into saints. But there's also something very difficult about living in the room of grace, and that is you're not in the room alone. But in the room of grace, other people are going to have struggles with sin. They're going to have struggles that are just as ugly as yours, maybe even uglier than yours. You couldn't see those struggles as clearly in the room of good intentions because everyone was walking around with masks. But when people take the masks off, you see the brokenness and the depravity and you feel the sting and pain of sin. And the grace and forgiveness that you've been given, the healing that you've received in Jesus, you're called now in the room of grace to offer that same grace to others. So this room isn't just about your relationship between you and God. It's just as much about your relationship between you and other people. And I really loved this book. Uh, I loved this book because I hate how quick we all are, how quick I am to just say, I'm fine, I'm good. Trying to work now at being more honest and not just saying I'm fine and good. I want to be clear about my struggles. I don't want to hide behind good intentions. And one thing I'm discovering trying to live this book out, it is that it is both more freeing and more difficult to do. Uh, But I think it's going to be better in the end to walk in that, that freeness of being honest about struggles and about victories and about the work Christ's doing in my life and in the lives of others. Although there is one part of the cure that I didn't really care for, and that is they wrote on how we all have a destiny. And we open ourselves up to destiny when we begin to walk in grace. And while I believe we're all to walk in grace, and God does have a plan for all of us to love him and to love others and to receive God's love, at the same time, I don't really like any talk of destiny. I don't think anyone has a predetermined course of events that must they must follow or must come to pass. I don't think there's something that we were specifically destined to do. And if you don't make the right decisions here or get the right mindset at this point, you're going to miss out on the great plans that God has for you. I don't believe there's a special purpose for each person that you need to be afraid of missing out on. For example, I, I love pastoring in New Orleans. I love the ministry. I especially love the people in my church. The people are the best part. Uh, But I believe I could serve God just as well and glorify him just as clearly if I was a librarian in Phoenix. 
I mean, the key would be whether I'm a librarian in Phoenix or a pastor in New Orleans is, am I walking in the grace of Jesus Christ? It's not about a destiny God has for me. And while the section on destiny didn't ruin the book for me, I just found it to be a chapter that was largely unnecessary. And if you also don't like the idea of purpose or destiny in the way that I don't like it, you could probably skip the last chapter of that book and feel completely satisfied and encouraged with what's here. But The Cure is a very short book. It's very easy to read. It's engaging. Uh, I give it a hearty recommendation. And I would really love for as many of us as possible to take the lessons that are found in The Cure and that we can use them to walk in the grace of trusting Christ instead of struggling to keep a mask on to try to appease God when God is already pleased through Christ and we're called to trust in the completed work of Jesus Christ.